Hi everyone, and welcome back to this uh, next section on data-driven control of well, control of linear systems. Let's say, and well, what I took away already is that we want to consider the data-driven case in this uh, part. So what we ended up with in the in the last video was this model predictive control scheme MPC. Okay, so what this means is we had this discussion that open loop control gives us all sorts of problems when we do not have an exact model. Or maybe there are disturbances in the system that cannot be foreseen. Right? If you think about autonomous driving maybe, and you're trying to optimize the, the, the system behavior of the car, then you may not know in advance whether other vehicles may you know, come into your lane and so on. So it's very hard to do open loop predictions. Even if you have a perfect model, this is hard because of unpredictability. And if you have model deviations, these quickly accumulate and you run into issues. So we had this feedback or closed loop control scheme where we measure either the full system state or some observed quantity, some output Y, and use this to determine a feedback signal. And this way we close the loop. And what we did in model predictive control is we used a system model and then we did open loop control based on the system model, right? And the case we considered was a linear model. So this is why we consider linear MPC here, which means we have a linear model. We solved this linear system that we derived to determine the optimal feedback signal. And then we fed this back into the plant, the system that's running at the same time. And this way, determine the feedback law, right? The issue that we identified is if you want to do this, you need to solve the control problem in real time. And so what I would like to address here is two questions, actually. First, what if we do not know our system? Um, second thing is, what if the system is maybe known, but simply too expensive to predict? So a very complicated nonlinear setting, maybe. And so what we want to do now is to combine two things that we have seen already, right? So what we want to do is we want to do MPC or linear MPC plus system identification. Okay, so this is our task. Maybe we don't know the system. Maybe the system is too expensive to, you know, solve in real time or to solve the associated control problem in real time. And so we identify a system and then use MPC on the system. And what I would like to use here is, and this is already um, taken away in the title, I want to use dynamic mode decomposition or a certain extension thereof to realize this uh, system identification in, in a linear fashion, okay? So what we have seen already in dynamic mode decomposition, we had the following problem we wanted to minimize a classical least squares function. So we consider trajectory data, n plus one samples, and what we want to minimize is the difference between, um, excuse me, the state at k plus one minus a linear map that maps forward the state at time step k. Okay, and then this we simply take the Frobenius norm or pointwise the two norm, okay? So what we have is this prediction problem. Well, let's clean this up a little bit. This prediction problem in terms of a linear model. So we may have trajectory data. We may not know that this is a linear system, but we're still trying to identify the matrix. So it's n by n. So what this is simply is a multivariate regression problem or multivariate OLS, or ordinary least squares, right? But this is what we did. And if we do this, we find a matrix A, and then we have part of our system identified, right? Two problems remain. First of all, this was briefly discussed. Um, maybe the linear assumption is very restrictive. Right, we don't know. Maybe it's, it's useful, maybe it's also simply not powerful enough, not versatile enough to uh, model a highly complicated nonlinear system. Second problem that we have, and I guess this is more obvious, where's the control? <laughs> so if we want to use this in a control setting, we need a control term, obviously, okay? And so 
there's actually two very straightforward approaches to, to overcome these problems. Um, and we have seen the first one in, in all sorts of other um, settings before. And the second one will actually be uh, a straightforward renaming of things, let's say. Okay, so what about one? Um, what we can do is, the simple trick that we have used before, we introduce a feature map, okay? So we take x and we define a dictionary psi. And so we map x to this lifted space psi of x that we can denote by z then, okay? So we transform our data using a dictionary. This can be, I don't know, sines and cosines, polynomial terms. You can use a neural network to realize this mapping and so on. What we are going to use in the code in a minute is, is polynomial terms. Okay, so what you do is you simply lift this and then you can do the DMD algorithm on this lifted dynamics. And what you uh, then get is what is called the extended DMD. Right? Extended because you lift your state into a higher dimensional space. And the hope would be that a lifting into a higher dimensional space allows for a better identification of linear relations. Right? This can be seen in an analogous fashion to support vector machines maybe, where you lift your data in order to find a linear classifier for, for a nonlinear data set. And here you lift your system state to find a linear dynamical relation, whereas in, in the original state space, the system may not be linear. Okay, and so this is very closely linked to what's known as the Koopman operator framework. But we're not going to talk about this here. Um, I will post references in the comments so that you can take a look at this if you're interested. This is a huge topic, very, very interesting for dynamic systems. For now, all we're going to use is this dictionary to lift our state space. Okay, so problem one has been not solved, has been addressed, right? There's a huge challenge in how to select this dictionary, but we have addressed it, let's say. All right, and so what about point two? Right, and here we can use a very, very simple trick. What I'm going to say is simply learn the B matrix as well, okay? It's just that simple. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rewrite this problem in a way that we hopefully address both problems, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize over a matrix C, right? So let's define what this is. So let's say we have a Q dimensional state. Now we have changed it from N dimension to Q, usually a larger dimension. And the C matrix is going to be I'm going to tell you what this is in a second. It's an N by, sorry, a Q by Q plus M, where M is the control dimension, dimensional matrix. And what we are minimizing is a similar least squares loss function, K equals zero till N minus one. But now in terms of the lift, lifted space, so this is Psi, of x k plus 1 or z k plus 1 minus the c matrix times psi of x k u k. So what I'm doing is I'm simply concatenating the input and the state at time step k, right? And so the two norm of this. So what you see here is a simple trick, really. If I look at the C, then I can decompose this into an A matrix and a B matrix, right? This way I have the dimension Q by Q for the A part and Q by M for the B part. And so you see, I'm not required to make this a quadratic matrix because it's simply a multivariate regression problem. So these are my regressors and I'm mapping them forward. Um, so I'm learning the weights, multiple of them, you know, because this is a multivariate problem towards the next time step. And so by solving this problem, which is still an OLS problem, so 
basic techniques like the pseudo inverse can be used, we get now a dynamical system that looks as follows. And then we can use this for our MPC. Okay, so we have our psi of x k plus 1, which is approximately a times psi of xk plus b times uk. Okay, and so this is the dynamic mode decomposition with control or the extended dynamic mode decomposition with control. So with two very simple steps, we have now identified a system, and this is an approximate sign because obviously we are still trying to identify a linear system for maybe nonlinear trajectory data. So we cannot expect this to be perfect. Um, in particular, this linear relation can be very, very challenging if the original problem has nonlinear control dependencies, but maybe this is would be leading too far. Let's just say if the original system has such a linear control input, this usually works actually quite well. Okay, so but it's not a perfect model, it's an approximate model because we have still learned something from data and we have minimized this, but the loss function is generally not going to be exactly zero. And this is where MPC now comes into place, okay? So we have a nonlinear system potentially, the plant, then we have the extended DMD algorithm, so we define a dictionary psi, and then we identify a linear system that is not perfectly accurate, but may be useful in combination with MPC. And this is what we're going to study with some code now. Okay, so what I've uh, introduced here is a very, very well-known example, which is called the Duffing oscillator. Okay, so it's an ordinary differential equation of second order, with these parameter values, where well, the details don't really matter for, for this video now. But what you can do is, and we have seen this already, is how to transform this into a system of two ODEs of first order. <clears throat> okay, so you're introducing x1 is x and x2 is x dot, and this is how we get two equations of first order. And then you see that we have this nonlinear term in the second equation, and we have the linear input u, right? What I said, this is favorable for this approach, so we have this linear input and hopefully we can, can do something nice with it. So what I'm doing first is I'm simulating the system, okay? So this is just the right-hand side, so this matrix here, with the coefficients alpha, beta, and delta, as prescribed in the text. Oh wait, I've, I've changed it a little bit to this description, but you can play around with this. Um, it changes the system in a little bit and actually you may change where you have stable fixed points and where you have unstable and so on. But as long as this number is positive, not much changes. So um, this is point one in the example here. You have this right-hand side. And I'm using a, a rungel kutta integrator of fourth order to make a prediction. So a nonlinear system and I integrate it in time. And so what you then get is if you simulate this with an initial condition over um, a large number of time steps using two different inputs. So I'm simulating the system without any control and with a simple sinusoidal input just to see what's going on. Then you obtain the following behavior, okay? So here we're starting here. You see that actually this point one zero is a stable fixed point for the parameters that we have seen. So you, you know, you can uh, move into this point. Actually, the system has three fixed points. It has one as one zero, one at minus one zero, and one at zero zero, which is unstable. And in the right picture, you see the sinusoidal control. So you actually see these two fixed points at one zero and minus one zero, and it's wobbling around these um, with this, this sinusoidal control input. Okay, so we cannot use MPC in our linear way that we have done before. So what we need to do is we need to use EDMD with control. So this is exactly what I've written on the board here, right? So we're identifying the C matrix in form of this, this OLS problem to map forward psi and u to psi at time step k plus one. Yeah, two references where this is explained in detail. And here's the code. So what I'm simply doing is I'm using a dictionary of polynomial degrees of maximally degree four. Right? So you can set this flag. What you get is these terms that map uh, or lift the input, which is z in this notation here, um, to polynomials of maximally degree four, so 15 dimensional if I use all of them. 
And so here I'm using degree three, so 10 dimensional lifted state. Um, and so this is my, my dictionary function, okay? So I'm taking in the z and I'm lifting this to, to degree um, 10 in this case. All right, so now we perform the following steps. We collect data, we then lift the state data, and then we solve the multivariate OLS problem. So yeah, 10,000 samples, I randomly sample them from a certain box with random inputs, so IID sampling of my data, and then um, the, the associated output, um, so the, the next time step, which I'm denoting as Y here, is just predicting forward at the randomly drawn X and U, and this gives me the tuples I want to have, right? And so what I'm doing is I'm lifting the, the X towards you know, my lifted state um, Psi, and I'm also lifting my output Y to the lifted state. And so you see this single line is now my OLS problem. So the lifted state, which is Z now, and the lifted output, which is Psi Y. And solving this OLS problem gives me the big C matrix, which I then can separate into A and B, exactly as I've done on the board. Okay. And so you know, here the dimensions match as well. So you have 10 by 10 matrix for A, and a 10 dimensional vector with one single input, so 10 by one for the B matrix. And what you can do then is you can compare the system state of the original system to the system state that we you know, propagate in a linear fashion with this identified model. And now you're in for a surprise. The behavior is actually very terrible. <laughs> so this is what I said, right? Um, there's no guarantee that you learn a good model. We lifted it to polynomials of degree three. Um, if you compare this to lifting it to degree two or not lifting it at all, you will see that this is even worse. So we have improved, but clearly this is a terrible model behavior. Um, so open loop control is obviously not possible. This is really horrible. Um, but what you can try is you can try to use this in the MPC loop, okay? What do we do? We measure our state at time step K, we lift it, and then we solve over a open loop horizon of NP we solve the open loop problem as we have done it previously and, and studied in detail, okay? And then we use the first entry of U to apply it to the real system. So what we need to do is what we have done before, to define the Q and R matrices, then identify the G and H matrices for this linear system, um, the, the equivalent formulation to, to do the, the, the algebraic system for, for predicting the dynamics. Um, and then we have the Q hat and R hat matrices for the associated time length of NP prediction steps. And then we have the MPC loop exactly as in the previous video. So all we need to do is we identify the reference state, um, which is zero in this case, so we just want to move the system to the origin, and then solve this linear system given the current initial condition, which is uh, X MPC at time step K, okay? And then as before, we apply the first entry to the real system, but now the real system is not our linear system, the real system is the Runge Kutta integrator of the original nonlinear duffing oscillator. And what you see is actually quite surprising that this works really nicely, right? So you would have expected, because the model is so bad that nothing can be done, but you see that MPC is so powerful that even though we have a terrible model behavior, we have identified a model that at least captures the correct qualitative behavior, what the control input does, okay? So this is all we need to identify a control signal. Let's go to the third one. This is the control signal here to steer us in the correct direction, right? So I'm not saying that this is the optimal control in terms of the original system, but it certainly is an input that stabilizes our system. So what we have done now is we have basically not used any system knowledge, we have used data identified the system and then solved MPC using this not so good model, but computationally very efficient model. And this is how we close the loop in real time. So there's lots of open questions here, but I guess this is a good starting point for, for data-driven model predictive control. And next up are topics more towards nonlinear control. Thank you.